Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's been a while since I did a video on this uh, little TS-100 soldering iron. Um, I wasn't using it a great deal um, until recently, and uh, it was brought to my attention that there's actually an open source firmware upgrade for it. Um, so being as it seems I won't have access to my soldering station probably ever again for a while, so I figured I'd do a video on how to upgrade the firmware on this soldering iron. So what we're going to start by doing, um, and of course I got all of my cables tangled up here, give me a second here, there we go. So we're going to bring in our USB micro B cable here that's plugged into my desktop, or my laptop, uh, and we're going to press this forward button here and plug it in. And you'll hear my computer just uh, recognized that the solder iron is plugged in, and you'll see it's now in um, firmware upgrade mode. So now we're going, I'm going to take my camera down off the stand here and point it up at my computer here. And you'll see here at GitHub, there is a page that has a bunch of uh, hex files here. Now there are a bunch of different languages available here, but in the case of myself, I would have downloaded the uh, TS100 underscore EN for English. Now I'm going to minimize the browser there, and we'll see here that I've actually already downloaded a bunch of stuff here, and we'll see over here that the iron appears as a drive. So in order to upgrade it, all you need to do is grab your TS100EN hex file and drag it over into this little virtual drive that was created by the iron. And we'll see that it's going to copy. Now, you heard the uh, iron disconnect and reconnect there. So then if you go into that actual file, you'll see that we now have a new file in here called ts 100 underscore And that means that the firmware upgrade was successful. Now, there's one other thing that we can do here, and that is that we can create a logo uh, that will appear in the iron. Now, it used to work that you'd just take a small bitmap file. Uh, I think it's 96 pixels by 16 pixels and drag it into uh, the IRON's file structure, but with this new firmware it doesn't work that way. So what you actually have to do is you have to go back to, uh, we'll go back to GitHub here and I'll show you. Um, in a previous uh, release here you'll see the ts100.logo.editor.exe. Uh, you download that one and you'll go into the TS100 logo editor, uh, and it'll ask you if we want to run it. It's okay, we can run that. Um, and then it's going to load, uh, it's going to ask uh, some questions here. So <clears throat> you'll load whatever image you want. Uh, it'll show what it's going to look like on the screen here. You can fit, stretch, invert, and then save DFU file. And then once it's done doing that, and I've actually already done it with my logo, you'll get uh, I named mine Iron Logo Hex, you'll get a new file that you then just drag into the Iron's uh, little virtual drive there. And then if we go back in there, you'll see that... Oh, it actually threw an error. That's interesting. Um, hang on a second. Uh, I'll bet that I have to disconnect this and then reconnect it. There we go. Um, give me a second here. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So let's go back to the computer here. And focus in. So we'll grab the iron logo hex file, drag it into the iron. 
and then it says iron logo ready. All right, so now that we've had those two files successfully put onto the iron, we can then unplug the iron from the USB port, reach over here, and then we'll go ahead and plug it into power. So we'll give the power in there. We'll see it says Chris's iron. And then we have a completely new menu now. I uh, wonder if I can zoom in a little bit here and focus down. There we go. So now we can see that uh, we can set the power source to uh, either straight direct current or various different um, I believe those are settings for the number of, of lithium cells you have uh, plugged into it, because a lot of people like to run these off of lithium batteries. Uh, we can go in the soldering settings. I'm not too sure what boost mode is. Uh, then we have the boost temperature. We have auto start, which probably means as soon as it's plugged in, it'll uh, turn on immediately. Um, then we've got sleep modes. We can set the sleep temperature, the sleep timeout, the shutdown timeout, and the motion sensitivity on the accelerometer. Then we have the user interface. We can change the temperature units, uh, whether you're using it with a left or a right hand, uh, blinking the display when it's cool in cooldown mode, and how fast uh, the text scrolls. And then we've got advanced items or advanced settings, detailed idle screen, not too sure what that's what the, that does, detailed solder screen, and factory reset, calibrate temperature, calibrate input voltage. Um, oops. And then it goes back here. And then of course, if we want to solder, we hit the front button just like before, and you can see the temperature begins to climb there. Uh, it's a very fast heating soldering iron. I've, I've always been amazed at how quickly this soldering iron heats up. Um, you'll see the temperature seems to have a much higher resolution and refresh rate. Um, it bounces around there in the, in the 300 degree range. And then of course we can change the temperature up and down just like before. So there we have it. Just a quick little blurb on how to upgrade the firmware on the TS100. Um, if you liked, give me a like in the, uh, you know, hit that button. Uh, ask any questions you have in the comments below. I'll leave a link to subscribe. Uh, let's zoom back out here. There we go. I'll leave a link to subscribe about here, a video that YouTube thinks you'll find interesting here, and I'll go ahead and link to the uh, original TS100 uh, critique video right here. And also, please consider checking out my Patreon here to support my channel and help me purchase new items to uh, work on projects and teach you how to do stuff here. So we'll see you in the next time. Bye.